Hi, uh, this is the second part of the introductory course of Just Statistics. And this is about the spatial continuity analysis of the physical phenomena. Uh, we'll see simple statistical tools to evaluate, to quantify, and to model the main spatial patterns of the physical phenomena of the natural resources, like, for example, soil, or forest, the mineral deposit, etc. This is uh, maybe the most important step of any geostatistical study where one wishes to summarize all the expert knowledge about the phenomena together with the scarce available information like uh, normally few samples in simple statistical tools which quantify the spatial continuity or the spatial pattern. Note that uh, these tools are the essential ground for the next step of estimation or simulation models that we will see afterwards. But also, this can be sometimes the most frustrating step of a geostatistical study. Once we deal with uh, natural phenomena, very heterogeneous phenomena, with lack of information, sc scarcity of samples, normally collected not at the place we wish and uh, not with the ideal conditions we desired. So all this uncertainty can lead to non-expectable results. But uh, this is precisely uh, this framework that makes the spatial continuity analysis one of the most challenging and at the same time exciting stages of a geostatistical study. The second part of this course is divided in three main models. The first will see the basic tools to quantify the spatial correlation between attributes of a given phenomenon, like, for example, spatial covariances and value grounds. In the second model, uh, we'll see how to calculate experimental value grounds. And in the third last model, and last model of, the, of this part, we'll see how to model them. Today we'll start the main topic of a geostatistical study, which is the spatial continuity analysis of natural physical phenomena. Spatial continuity analysis of a physical phenomena of a natural resource means the characterization or quantification of the spatial patterns of main properties that characterizes the physical phenomena of the natural resource through simple statistical tools. Take this example. At left hand side, uh, it is represented 2D views of the dispersion of, for example, soil property. Two images representing the, uh, the different spatial patterns of that property here. At the right hand side, one can see uh, a simple statistical tool, for example, we call it Vagram, that summarizes the main patterns of the, uh, the main characteristics of those patterns, with in this case a fast transition between the bodies of high and low values at the top here, or with a very smooth transition uh, between those values. Or very erratic phenomena with high, in this, in this picture here, with a high variability at small scales. It generates a very ground with the high discontinuity at the origin here. Or like this picture here, we can notice that the phenomena has not the same variability in all directions. It's more continuous in this north-south, let's say, north-south direction than in east-west. It means that this is an isotropic phenomenon. And this is reflected in different fairgrounds in different directions. In short, with spatial continuity analysis, one intends to reach two main objectives. First, we call it structural analysis, which goal is to understand and quantify the main patterns of the spatial phenomena main directions of continuity and isotropic behavior of internal properties, etc. The second objective 
uh, consists on capitalizing the spatial pattern knowledge of the previous step and summarizing it in a spatial correlation model representative of the entire area, which is the basis of geostatistical estimation simulation methods that we'll see later. Now let us see simple statistical tools to quantify the spatial continuity patterns. Take those two pictures, representing, let us say, two types of rocks, blue and white, and red and white here. We notice that those two pictures show very different spatial patterns. More continuous bodies in bottom picture here, and less continuous at the top. Now we are going to use what we call a structural element a straight segment to quantify uh, the spatial continuity in both directions. Take this straight segment <coughs> with the length L, specific length L, and uh, let us put uh, it in all possible positions of the image, like this one. Any time the segment is totally included in the blue body, it takes the value 1, otherwise it takes the value 0. Going through all positions in the picture, we will get the relative proportion of times that the segment is included in the blue body. So we can build this function here. Now, let us increase the length hell of the segment and repeat the exercise. In this way, we, we can build a function of the relative number of intersections of the segment of length hell. This, this way, okay, and this is the function. Now, by doing the same exercise with the other image, we can get a different function which characterizes this, the different patterns. Like this. We can use the straight segment to measure other spatial patterns properties. Like, for, exa for example, if uh, we turn it, we can measure similar functions of spatial continuity, but in other directions. We can measure how anisotropic are uh, the main structure of this image here. But we can also use other structural element, like, for example, two points separated by a distance, how. And we can use identical exercise we did with segment, like, for example, here. Okay. But uh, note that the two points are, as a structural element, is a bit more poor to, to quantify the spatial patterns. For example, here the two points can be both here, uh, in <coughs> can be both in different bodies and take the value one. In other words, they measure the continuity but not the connexity. Now let's consider. A continuous variable like porosity of a soil, concentration of a contaminant and so on. We could do identical exercise with the segment or with the two points, but instead of counting the number of intersections as we did with the bivariate variable, we can calculate any statistic that measures the similarity between the two points. Now I would like to stress that in the most of situations of a natural resource studies, soil sites, urban air quality, geological resources, water quality, etc., our knowledge is scarce and it's, it is summarized by a discrete set of samples. In these situations, the B point structural element is the most appropriate tool to quantify the spatial patterns of the physical phenomena. Nevertheless, when the special phenomena is known through a full image, where the values are known in entire space, expert images, outcrops, like for example, these ones here, representing geological structures, <coughs> uh, which patterns we wish to quantify, in these situations, one can use uh, multi-point statistical tools like the segment to quantify the special patterns. But this is out of the scope of this course. Now, let's come back to the big point statistics. In short, we wish to quantify the spatial continuity patterns of a given phenomenon. 
through a B-point statistical tool by using a limited set of samples. And we wish to apply for any continuous variable, porosity of a soil, concentration of a contaminant, etc. Let's, let us consider the, pro the, the property Z, Z here, uh, located at X, being X uh, general, a general notation of geographical coordinates, X, Y, and Z. And located at uh, x plus h, which is being h, the vector that separates the two points, x and x plus h. Hence, uh, we wish to quantify the spatial correlation between any pair of samples separated by a vector h. This one here. Let us consider this example, a very simple example, a subsoil mineral resource recognized by a set of samples of porosity from a few wells. Those are the wells and in colors here, those are the samples of porosity. Now, and we wish to evaluate the correlation between any pair of samples separated by H. Let us, let us start by a simple case of just one well, where we wish to evaluate spatial continuity of a variable z, z along the well. The spatial continuity along the well is a shift through the correlation between all pairs of values separated by a distance h. Let us consider all pair of values which means separated uh, of contiguous values, sorry, contiguous variables, which means separated by h equal 1. Okay, those one, those one, those one, all of them. We can plot the, the pair of values z of x and z of x plus h in a diagram or plot. And here, yeah, like this one here. And we can compute statistics here the mean variance <coughs> of each variable and also the correlation coefficient between those two variables okay z of x and z of x plus h now let us consider <coughs> uh, and the uh, all pair of values separated by h equal 2 we can plot the pair of, val of values z of x and z of x plus 2 in the identical diagram of b plot again we can compute statistics here of both variables, including the correlation of coefficient here. We can repeat the exercise for h equals 3. Okay, yeah. The cloud becomes, as you can notice, becomes more, more spread. And uh, <coughs> more spread when the distance h becomes bigger. See? But correlation coefficient is quite okay as well. Uh, H equal 4. Here the correlation coefficient is low, points, points is 3, and H and H equal 10. There's no correlation, we can consider there's no correlation between those samples separated by 10. Well, we can summarize all B plots in one diagram of correlation coefficients as a function of distance age. This is what we call a chorogram that, as I said, summarizes all B plots of lead distance age. But uh, this chorogram represents just the spatial continuity of this well. If we do the same exercise, uh, for all samples of all wells, we'll get a global chorogram, which is representative of the entire area. We'll see in the next lecture how to calculate this experimental statistics.